My name is Wendy Pearson. I am the Digital Inclusion Fellow at the Kansas City Public Library in Kansas City, Missouri. Um, and I really appreciate the opportunity to talk to you all today about um, the Learning Circles project we've uh, begun recently. And we've used it as a tool to teach adults um, basic computer skills, mostly. Um, so really, digital inclusion overall is an initiative that the library's leadership here just really strongly invests in. Um, we are a very important anchor institution of our metro, and with the city's growing tech startup scene and strong support for entrepreneurial ventures, we're just really proud of our role in providing opportunities for you know, socioeconomic and education advancement. Now, a little bit about me, since my um, position is kind of unique. Um, I am a Digital Inclusion Fellow, which means I'm serving a one-year term of service sponsored by Google Fiber and a small nonprofit in Portland, Oregon called Inten. I'm one of 23 fellows nationwide, and we're placed with organizations to bridge the digital divide. Now, that's an intentionally vague statement because you can imagine since we're placed at pretty drastically varying organizations, our work looks differently. I'm actually working with the library, of course, but others are working at housing authorities, churches, literacy, you know, literacy organizations, and more. Um, so now about a year ago, our central downtown library opened up a brand new technology center. It's open to the public and we have a big, beautiful computer lab with full-time staff always available and on duty to help patrons with their questions and their you know, special projects. Um, it's fantastic and it's become a super important resource for our community. However, it's not helpful to the patrons that are in the community served by our nine other libraries. So just to give you a little um, background on our city, like most, like a lot of cities, I should say, uh, Kansas City actually has an isolated and underserved, you know, uh, area. We're actually very definitively divided east to west. Um, people who live in East KC don't always have the means to travel downtown to get help with their resume or, you know, downloading an application they might need. Um, so I've actually been tasked with building a volunteer program so that we can offer digital literacy services at our other, especially our east side, library branches. Now we've set up drop-in sessions, one-on-one -on -one appointments, and we've even expanded the way folks can learn um, to include learning circles without adding more responsibility to the plates of our staff at these branches. Um, and then finally, I've been working most recently on kind of taking the show on the road, so to speak. So we're offering classes and learning circles at several offsite locations in partnership with places like the Housing Authority, um, community centers, and other social service agencies. So when I first started, I learned that we had low and oftentimes no attendance for our one-off classes. So um, we were building it, but they were not coming. Um, so various staff at various branches had just kind of taken it upon themselves to put together, often from scratch, materials to teach tech classes to help adults with basic computer skills. Um, there wasn't a system-wide um, there was no oversight system-wide or and there was no standard for curriculum or scheduling or anything like that it was just very sporadic and not not always well promoted um, and so as i learned about kind of this state of things i also in the meantime was learning from my new supervisor about learning circles um, she told me about griff and peer-to-peer -peer university and hoped that I could get Learning Circle started just as part of my service. And it actually turned out to be a wonderful fit for teaching adults about computer skills. So um, classes weren't working. We were all over the place with our content and people weren't engaged. 
But learning circles turned out to be perfect because, of course, the courses are already made. Uh, we didn't have to devote staff time to putting stuff together. Um, and Peer-to-Peer -peer University had already created the tools that we needed for promotion and registration and even communicating with participants once we got people signed up. I mean, so all we had to do was provide volunteer facilitators and computers and, you know, really the, the hard stuff and the time consuming stuff was already done and in place. So it was just a really kind of a natural fit. Um, so some of the courses we've actually provided so far, um, based on what we learned from our patrons, uh, we tried to select classes based on what they told us they needed. So it turns out a lot of the patrons who need help with computer skills need help with the very basics. And so, for example, our first class was Internet Basics. We called it Make the Internet Work for You. Um, I think it was five, four or five weeks long. And we met for an hour and a half and we learned how to do things just, you know, basic internet searching, how to Google something. And then we uh, learned how to do email accounts. So we even actually spent a little bit of time exploring social media. And then we even covered things like um, safety and security, since to a lot of new computer users, those are some pretty, you know, serious issues that keep people from engaging with technology. Um, so covering things like safety and security really helped us, um, you know, helped our learners understand the, the relevance of, of technology in their lives and feel a little more comfortable moving forward. Um, we actually have used um, courses from GCFLearnFree.org. That's where we kind of put together our internet course. And then we've also used um, Lynda.com for uh, Microsoft Office courses. And then digitallearn.org has actually been a very great resource that um, I just learned about recently. And we're using that for our computer basics. Um, so this is for people who, in often cases, they have never touched a computer before. So um, digitallearn.org has been really great for those brand new computer users. And then we're having an Android smartphone basics course for a set of seniors at an offsite partner location um, here starting next week already. And we'll be using GCF Learn Freeze course on that. Um, now, to just kind of go over the successes and the failures of our experience so far, the proudest stat that I have about our learning circles is that we're maintaining roughly a 60% retention rate with our learners. We've actually engaged 19% or excuse me, 19 participants um, in the development of their digital skills for the whole course. And that's a pretty big achievement when we're targeting low income participants from underserved communities. In a lot of cases, we learned that, you know, our patrons are facing challenges that, um, some people just may not understand crisis level challenges sometimes. How are they going to pay their rent at the end of the week or get dinner for their families? So it makes it, it difficult when you have things like that to worry about. It makes it difficult to convince people that they should invest, you know, in a three to six week program that may not actually yield an immediate tangible result for them at the end. Um, but I'll actually get to one way that we've dealt with this uh, here shortly. But another overwhelming success is that we have created these sort of micro communities in the path of each learning circle that we've facilitated. Um, the groups of learners have become friends. So in the picture on the right, uh, we had a group of ladies in one of our pilot programs when we were learning about internet basics. And towards the end of the course, we covered uh, almost uh, the whole session we talked about Facebook and we worked on Facebook. So most of our ladies here created a Facebook account and we actually had an awesome time taking each other's portraits and then uploading them to our profiles. And then they all became Facebook friends and promised to stay in touch beyond our sessions. And so it was just really awesome to watch, you know, just kind of the evolution of these friendships develop over the course of five weeks and, and have these ladies having such a great time learning 
at the same time while they're learning about um, something like Facebook. Um, so we've just, we've had a wonderful time with uh, such a diverse group of participants in every single learning circle we've facilitated so far. But I want to talk about our failures as well. As well. Um, at first, I was pretty nervous and maybe a little too proud to talk about our failures, a um, little embarrassed maybe. But I've learned um, that I guess it not only helps me develop better programming in the future, but it can help you to not make the same mistakes. <laughs> Um, so the first thing we learned certainly was that we need every single second of that three to five weeks of recommended promotion time. Um, our first couple of learning circles, we actually only left ourselves two weeks. We were so concerned with getting people signed up that, and you know, we didn't want to show up on day one to empty rooms. Um, and so we were so concerned that we didn't screen anybody, any of our applicants for, you know, their skill level. Um, so this meant on day one, we had people all over the place. We had moderate users um, to people who had never touched a computer before. And it just, it really created a challenge and it was that just the entire process was very difficult as we just on the first day, tried to get people set up and logged into their computers. Um, in one of our more recent learning circles, we actually had selected a Microsoft Office 16 course from lynda.com. That's the latest version of Office. But the day before, our team actually discovered that the laptops we were using only had Office 10 installed on them. So that's a couple of versions behind. Um, so that was a little embarrassing. We had to change things at the last minute, but we made it work. One of our participants actually showed up and was pretty disappointed since he had signed up and specifically came to learn about Office 16. However, due to the flexibility um, of just the learning circles format, we were actually able to get him set up with the course he wanted while the rest of us worked through Office 10 together. And we were still able to, to have a very productive experience with that uh, learning circle. And then finally, I'm not sure if it's just a library challenge or just a human challenge in general, but it's pretty difficult to break away from tradition and things that we're familiar with. Our One of our first pilot learning circles turned out to be more like a class. Um, so we hired a part-time staff to help me uh, facilitate this new program, but since our learners were all over the place regarding their skills, um, she kind of ended up turning out to serve more as a teacher in front of the class, constantly answering questions and, and even offering, you know, lecture-like guidance. But we made some modifications about halfway through and, you know, ended up watching the videos together and going through the course together using a projector and and try to promote the peer learning. So some of our more advanced um, skill level people, we tried to pair them up with the, the beginners and we ended up having a great experience and things ran pretty smoothly. Um, so just a couple of key points about what we've learned. Um, as library staff and volunteers, we are just naturally seem to be trusted as knowledgeable and helpful people. And um, however, it's really important we've learned on day one that we have to make it clear we are not the teacher. And I always like to use the line that, you know, I introduce myself and then I make it very clear, I'm not your teacher, actually let me introduce you to your teacher. And then we go together as a group and find the course online. And then, you know, it's like, aha, here we are. Digitallearn.org is your teacher for this course. I'm just here to keep an eye on the clock and ask, you know, conversation provoking questions during a uh, group talk time. And then I also, as part of just kind of setting setting the mood, so to speak, for the entire course, I like to devote a good portion of the first session to getting to know each other. We do a really fun icebreaker and we make little name plates out of just sheets of paper. And our groups turn out to be pretty lively and we like to have a great time. 
but at the same same time, everyone really takes the course very seriously. Um, so it's just a really fun experience that we've kind of created through this program. I also like to use the sessions to promote other library services. So if we do have some participants who are struggling and um, maybe falling behind, I use this as an opportunity to, you know, pass out flyers, let people know that we offer other services like appointments and drop-in sessions so that if they want it, they can get help outside of the, the learning circle sessions. Um, and then finally, a few minutes ago, I talked about how hard it might be for some people to make the investment in a program like learning circles. Um, and I have actually been fortunate enough to have been provided a project budget as part of my uh, fellowship program. And so graduates, so to speak, of our, our learning circles receive their choice between a free 30-day bus pass or a refurbished laptop. And um, this really helps people come back because they can only get these awards if they have perfect attendance and come to every single session. Um, so this really helps us keep our participants engaged and um, you know, obviously they're they're staying engaged and coming back and learning, um, but then also getting something that's really helpful and applicable in their in their daily lives. And thanks to a partnership actually that we've developed with a that a nonprofit device refurbisher nearby, I think we're actually going to be able to continue um, these incentives even after my project budget is done. So I can't stress enough the importance of community partnerships for something like Learning Circles especially. Um, there are organizations all around us and chances are most of us are actually working hard to serve the same people after all. And so finding ways to um, just maximize the benefits that we're providing to our, our people is just, it's been a really successful, uh, wonderful way to do programs like this. Um, so just in case you were curious, I went ahead and created a little uh, chart about the project budget. And we've um, allotted $3,500 for our learning circle uh, participants. And I've kind of kept the range at $50 per participant because that's the cost of a bus pass or a refurbished laptop. And so that enables us to serve around 70 people. So. It really goes a long way. And um, of course, I set some money aside to uh, for volunteer appreciation because they are, after all, doing a lot of this work. And so being able to give them awards too um, has been really important. But um, otherwise, really, that kind of concludes everything I've prepared and hope that it's been useful. And I look forward to answering any questions you may have.